bright shining stars. Praise Him, you heavens and waters and skies. Let the whole world praise Him. Great in power, great in glory, great in mercy, King of
Jesus, that you are everything in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us. And we worship you, Lord. May you pour your love over us as we worship you. In Jesus' name, yes. we love you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy of all, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are worthy. We give you praise, Lord. Yes, Jesus. And we give honor you in this morning. As we are just sitting around here, I just pray. Have a sense that we let's all pray in tongues. Let us pray in tongues. Let us let the spirit break right now. Shikanda lava sianda lava. Yende lava sikanda lava sianda lava. Baraka sianda lava sianda lava shikala kasiya. Yelebe sianda lava sianda lava. Yeke se karama sianda lava shika. Baraka si tatara mashia karama yikarash. Yelebe se rebe koshi sianda lava ya sakala maya baraka sianda lava. Baraka si yanda la ba shi yanda la ba ya kasi yanda la ba ya yeke si mulo koshi yanda la ba ya reke si yanda la ba shi karaba si ke yanda la ba ya yero kora kashi yanda ya kalaba si ya kalaba ya yeke la ma si yanda la ba yeke la ba ya si yanda la ba ila kashi yanda yebi ribi ribi Let us just be still and just be quiet. Let's just wait on the Lord as we prayed in tongue. And let's just wait for the Lord to interpret. And we are rushing because we can't not wait on the Lord. Can we just be still and be quiet? And then let's wait. Let's just hear the Lord speaking. Let us just stay still. Whatever you get there, you just stood up and interpret. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Yes, Lord. Thank we you, give Jesus. thank you to you. Yes, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Yes. 
Thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you that we be able to just hear what you say to us. And thank you, Lord, that we manage to reflect on the worship that we get to be encounter with you. And thank you, Lord, for that we want to give glory to you. Whatever we've been doing this morning, we want to give honor to you. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, worship team. As we've been worshiping, I felt to the Lord, if you had such a rough week, um, coming to now Sunday, and things have just been very hard, it's been very difficult, just put your hands up, and yeah, just put your hands up there, just put your hand up, if it's been a hard, hard week, it's been a hard week, you just say, you don't know how did you make it to Sunday, and it's just been a quite a tough time. And things look like they've just been coming to you. Things have just been really not all right. And just put one more hand, and then those who are around with you, could you just lay the hands over them and just pray? Put your hands, and then put your hands up. And those who are around you, just pray for them. Just pray. Let's just really pray for a breakthrough. And those, if you, there's nobody, actually John Wimber said everybody got to play. Guys up there, just stretch your hands and just pray for, for these people around. Let's just really, just pray for a breakthrough. Father, we just come in this morning. And Lord, we know that it's been a quite of a tough week. It's been very difficult, but right now we pray for breakthrough in Jesus' name. And I just pray that you said in your word, your yoke is easy. And Lord, we just pray that whatever the burdens and whatever the challenges that have been going through in this week, Lord, they may just put it in your feet. And Father, we thank you. It's not about us, but it's about you. And Lord, we want your name to be glorified. And Lord, I don't know the storm that they're going through, but I just pray that whatever the storm they're going through, they may fix your, our, their eyes in you, Jesus. And Lord, they may see that you're doing great. And they may see that your love never leaves them and your love never forsake them. And Father, I just pray a blessing over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Good, good. Sheesh, man. <laughs> I'm a bit, I feel a little bit naughty, eh? <laughs> just ask someone next to you, what's your name? <laughs> and ask, ask, what is your name? <laughs> What is your name? Ask, what is your name? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, do I know you? Huh? Do I know you? Huh? Okay. You know, this week, something the Lord that has been speaking to me, and then this is going to be very challenging. We are too comfortable in terms of sitting around and then we don't like change. So on that note, you guys just move around and this guy sit around and that is change. And then the older people, please don't, don't, don't sit down there. We love you guys. <laughs> the older people just move around, just switch, switch their chair. Change. 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 S sit around. If you're sitting there, you, if you can change. Andrew there, just switch around. Monica, just change. Keith, just change around the chase. Just change. Change around the chase. Just change. And I know some people, they're like, ah, we don't like you now. We don't like you. I don't separate the couples, guys. But I just, just change. And then those who are not well, I don't want them to move around. But change is very important. Wow, even Dorothy is changing. Well done, Dorothy. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Can we pray for Dorothy? She's going to hospital this week. Let's just stretch their hands and just pray. She's looking beautiful. I love you, Dorothy, man. Father, we thank you for Dorothy. We just pray for your healing touch. And we pray as she's going to hospital, Lord, that she'll be full of glory to you, Lord. As even the nurses and doctors, they will see you shining. And we pray the wisdom from the doctors and the nurses that as she's there, she will actually have a great time. And I pray for greatest week for Dorothy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes.
Don. Yeah. Yes. We can tandaza lu don amand. Okay. Hand. Stop. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father, we just continue what you have done, and we're just praying for the healing touch right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we said that bleeding must stop right now in Jesus' name. And we give honor what you're doing, and we give thanks in advance that you have healed done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's good to have um, the YWAM young guys around here. Can you please give them a big hand? I think it's good. Um, welcome. Um, I never know that, Matthew, you are so good on renting the crowd to come along. Praise the Lord. Where is Matthew? Uh, disappeared. Oh, change, change. Yeah. Don't forget the basket. Can you please pass the baskets around? Thank you, Father, for these offerings. Thank you, Lord, for this tithe. I just pray that whatever we do, we'll do it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I've got quick announcements before I just call Matthew to come up in the front. We've got Africa Mshope. Those of you know Africa Mshope, he write the books. One of the books that he actually wrote that was very challenging. And then in this week when we were at PE, we actually got to really share about at um, positions and titles. Sometimes we tend to be very grabbing over the position. I'm a pastor. And then we want those things to identify who we are. But we are not actually identified by the position. We are identified by who Christ is in our life. And he wrote the book about ancestral worship. And recently... He's going to be launching the book, which is quite very interesting. I asked the church to pray about that. A lot of young people, they wanted to actually exercise to become in Sangomas. And that is quite very hard. We needed to, even they wanted to take it to school now to teach about it. And as, as Christians, as people, we know the truth of God. We needed to stand firm and pray about it. And then we know that we're not fighting against the flesh, but we're fighting against the spirit. And we needed to be able to stand firm for the word and really preach. So he wrote the book about that, uh, about the, the attack in the spiritual atmosphere. And it's, it's just been incredible to hear him summarizing over that book but one thing that I look when on that book, it's all putting us to focus in Christ. Everything is centered in Christ. It's all scripture written. It helps us not to look for the truth somewhere else. It's to look in the word of God. And that's what really encouraged me when we're going there. So we're going to have Africa Mshope on the 30th of March, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Thursday. And then uh, if you can not be able to get here, listen, I can fetch you as well. Uh, uh, and then if you can't drive, I can drive you. Uh, I'll volunteer to be here. And then on the 31st, he'll be launching his book about ancestral worship. And um, I want to say to all our white brothers and sisters here, listen, ancestral worship is happening around. And then I think you must be aware don't think that you are white, you don't, you don't go to Sangomas. You needed to be aware for that, what is going on. So he'll be launching his book from the 9, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then, obvious, it will be very interesting just to hear about that. And then, secondly, guys, we're still looking for help over the kids' zone. Kids' zone, it's Sunday school. So if you are actually... One, so good with children, we'd like you to have you to assist, speak to Charlene at the end of the service, or come and speak to me. We are looking for help us to help in Sunday school. Most important part, it's a foundation for these kids. I keep saying that again and again. You never knew that I went to Sunday school and then I'm going to be coming your pastor. So you never know what you are doing over the life of those kids. So please, 
if you can assist, even once a month, we'll appreciate that. And then I urge again the parents, please get involved uh, to know what is happening in your kid, in the kids' zone. Probably we might be teaching something wrong over your kids, and you never know. I'm just, it's an advertising, so you go there <laughs> on that. And then we're asking if you can please donate Easter eggs. Easter eggs are already out in the shop. This is so funny how things go by. And then please, if you can donate Easter eggs and bring them here at the office uh, on site or maybe during the week. Um, we're not going to tell you what we're going to do with those Easter eggs, but we might eat them. But we'd love to have those Easter eggs. And then, yeah, that's more what I have to say. I think other than that, if you are not in WhatsApp, uh, please speak to me. And then we can put you on WhatsApp group because all of those information, we'll be sending them through WhatsApp group. And then could I please ask Matthew to come up in the front and preach. Amen. Can we all just stretch their hands and really pray for him. Father, we thank you for Matthew. We thank you, Lord, as he's sharing with us, Lord, that we may hear from you. Father, I just pray that you use him and anoint his word as he's sharing with us. Whatever, Lord, you have to say, Lord, we may see you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that we may be challenged as well as we leave this place and we can be the doers of the word as well. Holy Spirit, would you come and move among us. And we're welcoming you here in Jesus' name. Amen. And thanks, man. Amen. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Solani. Uh, so my name is Matthew, and I'm from YWAM. Does anybody know uh, what YWAM is? Everybody know YWAM? Of course, we've got, a, we've got some German love coming over there to us from Josh. Uh, so YWAM Youth with a Mission, um, started by Lauren Cunningham a long time ago and the missions organization all over the world. And we love Pastor Zolani. He's a friend of our community and it's just uh, so good to be able to serve and, and be part of you uh, this morning. Um, I was uh, praying and kind of asking the Lord what he had for us this morning. And to be honest, I, I had like five or six things that he was, it was just like stirring and stirring and stirring. And it was, I didn't land until about five minutes ago. So, <laughs> so we'll just see uh, what happens this morning. I think the Lord has uh, a word of encouragement for you, but also a word of correction for you. Um, I think young people particularly, I'm looking at the guys up at the top there. Can you just wave at me so I know? Okay. So, and, and the guys over there, okay. I, I would really love for you to lean in to this. Um, just as I was uh, sitting there, I kind of got this picture for you guys particularly. It's like you've adopted the position of spectators in this church uh, rather than participants. And I just want to say to you, God's doing something in your generation in the world at the moment. Like God is profoundly active and, and powerfully moving in a younger generation. Um, and you get to either participate in that or not. God's not going to force you. Makes sense. And so what determines your, the degree to which you're going to step into what God's doing in this generation is how hungry you are for it. Um, and I just want to encourage you, I, I don't know why you would just come on a Sunday and just sit in a pew or just sit on a, a, a place at the back there. I'm sure there's more exciting things that you could do with your Sunday, yeah? If you're in the building, then you may, be, may as well be in the family, yeah? If you're in this place, don't allow yourself to be a spectator because God has more for you than that. And I know that even as you're listening, some of you guys, you're hungry for stuff. But I just want to say, I feel like you're taking that hunger to all the wrong places. So there's like an emptiness in you. There's like an ache in you. You wake up in the morning and you're asking the question, why am I here? What's the purpose of my life? What is this about? And then what you're doing, instead of taking that hunger and letting it drive you into the heart of God, that hunger is taking you and driving you to all kinds of other places. Places that even as you sit here this morning, you carry some shame about being in those places. Yeah? Does that make sense? And I just want to say to you, the Lord sees you, and He's not judging you, He's not angry with you, He just wants more for you than that. You don't have to become another casualty of a lost generation and a broken society. You can actually be light in the world, you can be salt in the earth, you can do something with your life, and it can be powerful. If as I'm speaking, is this resonating with any of these gents at the back here? Can I just ask you to be courageous, if that's you, awesome. Can you just stand up, we want to pray for you. Anybody else? As I'm talking, okay, stand up right there where you are. 
Because we want to see you, right? So church, I want you to look at that gent. This is your church, right? These are your people. And this church is going to thrive, not only because the people sitting down here are doing something with the Lord, but this is, this is the lifeblood of the future of this church. Yes? And so when these guys are standing and saying, Matt, something's resonating. I'm a, I just walked in the door. Okay, I don't know. I have no relationship with these people. But you do. This is your community. And so it shouldn't be okay that we come here Sunday in, Sunday out, and there's guys who are hungering for more, and we never notice that. We should. There should have something we should pour out into these guys and call them higher. But then I also want to say to you, you've got to reciprocate. Right? There's the story of Elijah and Elisha. And Elijah, he's the prophet. And then he sees that the next dude who's going to come up under him is Elisha. So Elijah goes to Elisha and he puts the cloak as a sign of saying, you're welcome. If you want to follow me, if you want all God has for your life, you can come after me. But then what does Elijah do next? He walks away. And what does Elisha have to do? Elisha has to burn all the stuff and follow. So as even if this church wanted to help you grow into the men of God that you're called to be, you've got to make a decision to burn the stuff and follow. Makes sense. So it's a two-way street, church. In one level, there's some Elijahs in this room who've walked with God, who have a, a witness and an experience and history with God, receipts in the kingdom, you know, and that you know who you are. And your job is to see the Elishas. You're not done yet. A friend of mine, Roger, we, we always say, if you're not dead, you're not done. Yeah? If you're not dead, you, so did you wake up this morning? Yeah, well, God's got mandate for your life then. Yeah? So if you're not dead... You're not done. And particularly the older generation, your work, what matters now is that you begin to pour out everything that's been poured in over a lifetime. That's what matters now. And I just feel like I want to just, def- boop, boop, bah, just defibrillate this place. You know, like, like we got to wake up and see there's a mission. There's a whole generation of people who need awakening. And you don't need much. Jesus changed the world with 12. We can do something in Kloof with two standing. You with me? So can I, can I get us to just stir up a little bit there? So gents, we see you. In fact, what I'd love to do, if I can push you even a little bit more, and this is why I want to do this, because it's easy for us to stand in a building like this. It's going to be a lot harder in an hour's time when you walk out the door to stand in society. It's going to be a lot harder. So if we can't do it radically here, we'll never do it radically there. Okay. So that's why this whole idea of like every head bowed, every eye closed, if you can just slip up your hand, we see that. That's unhelpful. Because what's that creating is that's creating timid Christianity. It's creating a faith that's based on a kind of salvation that counted no cost to enter in the door of Jesus. Yes? So can I push you guys? If you're hungry for God, and if you haven't stood yet, amen, you can stand now. There's always second chances. Come down here, actually. If you're hungry for God, if what I'm saying is like working for you, come down the stairs, come stand here. We want to pray for you. Come. And then can I ask, are there any Elijahs in the house, any like fathers of this house? And as I'm talking, you were saying, man, that is burning in me. I want to pour my life out for a younger generation. I feel I still, I'm not dead and I'm not done. I still got some stuff to give. Are there any Elijahs who would be willing to come pray for some young men and just pray an an impartation over these guys? I just want to ask. Absolutely. Elijah S's. Come on. Anybody else? Thank you. Please come. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Yeah. I had a vision of a, of a bubble. A vision of a bubble. I had a vision of a bubble over, uh, over this congregation. And we're looking, I know we, this church is looking for breakthrough, but the breakthrough is going to come from you and nobody else. We have to push in and break through the principalities and powers over this, over the world, over this country, over this area, over, over this suburb is, is holding us back. Yeah. But the power that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And it's required of us to break through. Azusa Street, great revival in the 1932s, I think it was around then. And now in Ashbury University in the States, there's great revival taking place. And that's what I believe this is going to happen in this church, but it's up to the young people. Yeah. It's, about us, it's, up, it's about the, the older, the generation, with the wisdom that you have, with all the gray hairs and the things that you've been through, 
to feed into these people, young, these young people. Amen. And, and I just want to say, I know for some of you, like, Yo, this is a big call. I'm just excited that I got out of bed and got here in the morning. You know what I mean? Like, my life is hard right now. I get that. But I just want to say, if you're not dead, you're not done. Yeah. And I believe that God has ability to strengthen you for His purposes right up to your last breath. But that's a perspective issue. We've got to lean in and trust that there's grace for us, even in our weakness, even in our tiredness, even when we're at the end of ourselves. We don't give up. God has more for us still. And it doesn't serve us, guys, to come. And I'm going to speak to this in just a second when we're done with this. It doesn't serve us to come here Sunday in, Sunday out, do the thing, go home, eat lunch, have a nap. What, what is the point? Are you with me? If we believe that God is real, if we believe that Jesus has called us into relationship with him, then we must take hold of that thing. We must enter into that. And this is not hype. Okay, I'm not trying to adrenaline us here. There's no nice organ behind me. I'm not see, I've got nothing to wipe over here. Okay? What I'm trying to do is stir biblical faith in the room to say that I don't live by sight. I live by faith. There's something else happening here. There's another kingdom operating. And we want to live into that. And it doesn't make us bad people when we fall asleep to that reality. It doesn't make us normal people. But sometimes we just need an awakening. Okay, so uh, here we have this army of young people. Gents, thank you. Amazing that you're standing here. I know it's awkward because I'm talking. You're standing here like, what am I supposed to do now? But here you are, okay? Here you are. God has plan and purpose for your life. God has plan and purpose for your life. You are made for more than just playing Xbox and scrolling Instagram and getting lost in doom scrolling. You with me? You're made for more than just like worrying what people think about you, looking to the left or the right. I'm not in the cool group. Oh man, I wish I was in the cool group. If only I could be this or that. The Lord says, no, I've called you for something. I've put a name and a purpose on you. You're made for more than shame that weighs down in your shoulders. Stuff that you've looked back in your past and wish, oh man, I wish I hadn't done that stuff. Or the family that you come from and maybe words that have been spoken over you. You're not good enough. You're never going to make it, right? Jesus is saying, those are not the words I've spoken over your life. You're made for more than that. Makes sense. Now is the time. The church of Jesus is awakening. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. It's a different kind of church that's coming. Let me tell you. The old is passing away. There is a new thing coming. And I believe that you guys are going to be at the forefront of that. But what I don't want this to be is just a moment. I don't want you to be like, ah, I remember that moment all those years ago. I just prayed that prayer. No, no, no. Jesus says this. He says, if you're going to follow me, count the cost of that. Nobody just starts building a house without first looking. Do they have the budget? Can they afford it? Nobody goes to war without figuring out who the people I'm going to fight against. Can I handle that? And so there's the crowds, and everyone wants the free bread that Jesus is giving, yeah? And Jesus looks at the crowd and says, careful, it's going to cost you to follow me. So I'm going to push you even further. I'm so glad you came to the front, but I want to push you even further, just like Jesus, our rabbi. He's crazy, this rabbi guy, I'm telling you. If you are thinking right now, and I want you to take a moment, we're going to be real quiet. Just you and God, I want you to search your heart, and I want you to say, Jesus, do I really want you? Like, really, really? And if you really, really want God, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you to get on your knees, on the floor. Not before us, but before your Father. And say, my life is yielded to you, and I want more of you, God. And if that's what you want, then when you get on your knees, we're going to pray for those guys. We're going to pray for the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. So take a moment in the quiet. And all of us, you are participating in this as well, right? If you're tired of dead religion, the, the form of religion without the power thereof. And you can get on your knees in front of that chair right now. Jesus is not a respecter of places or persons, right? He can do a thing. So let's just take a moment of quiet. Listen to the Lord. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you right here? Why are you here now? And then as you feel prompted, then we'll give you a moment and we can, those of us who want to respond, let's do that. Awesome, we see that. Anybody else want to get on their knees before the king of the universe? Amazing.
So I want to caution us, don't be pressured by the crowd. This is not a crowd decision. This is a you decision. The only reason you're getting on your knees right now is if you want to submit your life before Jesus. And anyone out here as well, you don't have to be at the front for this right now. We see you. Thank you, guys. Man, I honor and respect that. It's not easy to get on your knees. That's incredible. Anybody else? Yeah, Father, we know that this is uh, not comfortable, but your kingdom's not comfortable. It's hard to break people out of prison, Jesus. <laughs> Those doors don't open easy, and we're not going to unlock them with just a gentle blowing on the, on the lock. We need some dynamite here, God. We just want to honor every single person right now. We see these people who are on their knees before the Father. We want to pray over them, Jesus. We want to pray particularly for this younger generation. These gents right here, God, we're praying this wouldn't be a moment, but that this would be a catalyst. Father, that this would be an awakening for them to a brand new mission, a brand new purpose in the earth. Father, we're praying that we don't, we don't want to name what success looks like to you, God. We don't want to even pray that this church would be full. Maybe that's not what you want to do, Jesus. What we're praying is for a deep, burning passion in the hearts of these young people. We pray that they would hunger and thirst for you, Father as the deer pants for the water, that their soul would long after you, Jesus. We pray that, that, we, that you would salt their lips for you so that they would thirst for you, God. Make them so hungry for your presence that they couldn't get enough. We pray that you would ruin their appetites for everything less than Jesus. That's what we're praying for, God. And we pray for this church, Lord God. We pray for the same. Every single person who's on their knees now, every single person who's submitted before you, Lord, we thank you for the spirit of repentance. We thank you for the spirit of revelation that says you are the Christ, the son of the living God. We recognize that we're in the presence of holiness right now, Jesus. I recognize that for myself. And we're praying, Lord God, that this spirit, what you're doing in the room right now, Father, let this be a marking of this community going forward. You've spoken this over this community, Sarepta, Zarephath. This community of faith, this community of outpouring of the oil, Jesus. We're praying that this is what it would be marked by, God. We pray that this would be the end of dead religion in this building. We pray that this would be the end of dead traditions in this building, Lord. We're praying for the awakening of the Holy Spirit in this place, Lord God, to be stirring in people's lives. That eyes would be open and minds would be open and lives would be surrendered to the reality of a living God. A Christ who is seated at the right hand of the Father right now, who has poured out His Spirit into our hearts that we may know Him. Father, we're praying for this, Jesus. We're praying for unity in this body, Jesus. Deep reconciliation, God. We're praying for a oneness of spirit and mind in the mission of God that you've called them to in this place for this time. Just bless you, Lord. If you are... Uh, an older person or anyone, you, you just want to pray, just pray together in, in tongues, just pray out, whatever's on your heart, let's just kind of raise up slowly, just let prayers just start coming out, prayers for one another, prayers for these young people, you don't need a microphone to do that, let's just be praying, just be ministering right now. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to, if you're feeling uncomfortable right now, like if we keep ministering, keep praying, but if you're feeling uncomfortable right now, one of two reasons, either you're new to Christianity or you're too familiar with it. Those are the two reasons you would be feeling uncomfortable right now. Now, if you're new, if you're just coming to check it out, and we can have a coffee later, we'll explain to you all what's going on, and you're so welcome here. If you're uncomfortable right now because this is breaking the mold of Sunday church for you, I really want to challenge you. What you're seeing right now has always been the church. This has always been the church. In the early church, the the group of people that overthrew the Roman Empire were not a group of people who were limited by Sunday services. (laughs) Are you with me? This is the church. What's happening here, this is church. And if when you think church, you think a good coffee, three worship songs, some announcements, a sermon, and then home, you don't know what church is. This is church. This is Christianity. Are you, are you with me? So if you're feeling uncomfortable, it's one of those two things. It's, you're new here? I get it. It's weird. We're weird. Christians are weird. It's weird. It's okay. We can talk about that later. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but if you're uncomfortable because you're too familiar with Christianity, oh my gosh, I pray you'd be liberated from that. Pray that you would see how empty that religion is. It has no power to save you. Maybe that's why you keep going round and round in circles. This is church. Yeah? Um, so I had I have this strong sense, and I, I apologize in advance. Um, when Paul writes to the Ephesian church, he says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And it's easy for us as a church to fall into a trap of thinking that everything that we are fighting against is spiritual. Right now, in this present moment, God is asking us to break our traditions and the rules that we have put on Jesus and misrepresented him. He's calling out the older generation and saying, these people, these young people have been looking unto you, and you have misrepresented me in so many ways, and it's time for you to repent so that these people can fall in love with the Jesus that you profess. And if we can't get to that place... If we can't get to that place of saying, Jesus, I'm sorry I've misrepresented you. We are not going to continue presenting him in the light that he wants us to in the outside world. Some of us here are part of why these children are broken inside the church. And if we can't get to that place, then we might as well close the doors and go home. I work with a lot of young people. A lot. And it's not that they don't like Jesus or they don't love Jesus. They love Jesus, but the only reference they have of Jesus is their mothers and fathers who do not represent Jesus. We are asking God and Jesus to touch the lives of these young people, but 
He says, I will touch them through you. We need to ask ourselves the question, what imprint have we left on these young people? And if we search our hearts and we know that we have damaged these young people in the name of Jesus, then we need to own up, repent, and continue touching these people in the right name of Jesus. Yeah, so Lord, lots going on this morning. We thank you for your spirit. And uh, we just want to... Um Thank you that the kingdom of God is like a seed, and it's scattered, and then it finds different kinds of soil. Sometimes it falls in good soil. Sometimes it falls in bad soil. We pray that whatever's happening right now would find its way to the soil of, uh, of open and ready hearts, that it wouldn't just grow up too quickly and then get choked up by the cares of this world, that it wouldn't be snatched away by the birds, but that it would take root in this community. We pray you give them wisdom and strategy about how to steward what you are stirring here. We pray for selflessness and unity. We pray for these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. James, I want to ask you not to go back up there. I want you to find a seat in your church. Is that okay? So, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what time? Half past we're supposed to end? Okay, I'm going to land this uh, moment in something biblical so that we know that this is not just some crazy man from YWAM doing things. Okay. Uh, when I was uh, asking the Lord what we could talk about for you, I was taken to, well, I felt him say, um, it's in the name. It's in the name. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, what? look at the name of the church. And uh, the name of the church is Sarepta. You know? Now, I didn't know this, but Sarepta comes from Zarephath. And those of you who know your Bibles will know that there's a story in 1 Kings chapter 17 about a widow of Zarephath. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to read it real quick. I'm going to bring out one or two points, and then we're going to land the plane. I'll try and be so quick, Solani. I d it's important that we land what's happening in Scripture, okay, so that so it's not just ideas and thoughts and experiences, but I believe in the Word of, of God, and I believe it's powerful. So, 1 Kings chapter 17, the Word of the Lord came to, to uh, Jeremiah, sorry, Elijah, <laughs> Elijah, arise, go to Zarephath, go to Sarepta. Which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. <laughs> do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elijah. Quickly, to understand this, we have to understand the context. Uh, the king of Israel at the time, Ahab, had a girlfriend whose name was Jezebel, and so Israel had fallen into idolatry, and they were worshiping the God of Baal. Now, what's really interesting is that among many things, God of Baal is the God of rain, 
And so Elijah commands a drought because it's an attack on the God of rain. And the thing I wanted to say is that sometimes we find ourselves in a drought and we think it's the enemy. But what it really is, is God attacking our idols. I feel like this church has experienced something of a drought. And maybe you've been praying against it. But I want to say that maybe you've been in a season of God attacking your idols. Because when we see the nation of Israel, we see the, we see the cyclical right through the judges, right? The, the Israel is good. They, they love God. They worship God. Then they get in places of power, influence, affluence. What happens? They forget God. They worship idols. The nation falls apart. Then God has to send a judge. Then they remember. They repent. Then they love God. They worship God. They're in affluence, power. What happens? They forget. They sin. Idols. They, you see the cycle? What happens with us in our faith is we love God. We're so close to God in our moments of need. And then He rescues us. And then because we're just like Israel, when he rescues us, it's not very long before we forget. And then when we forget, we start getting into bed with idols. We start being just like Ahab and having Jezebel as a girlfriend. And we're putting all our confidence, not in God, but in other things. And so quickly, the nation of Israel loses its state as the people of God. And it starts to look like the nations all around it, because now fake gods have walked in there. I want to ask you, is it possible that Sarepta Church was in a season where the Lord was moving powerfully in your midst and there was strength and there was flourishing, there was life? And is it possible that at that place in your comfort, maybe, just maybe, some idolatry slipped in there? Yeah? And the power that once marked your community, the devotion that once marked your community, man, started to wane and dwindle And then there was the season of droughts, and now you've been struggling, going, where did the drought come from? And is it possible that maybe God has called called a war against the God of rain in your life and in this community? Is it possible that this has been a pruning season to call you back to what God has called you to? Is it possible that maybe Sarepta Church started to look a little bit too like its surrounding neighbors and not enough like the people of God? And he's spoken this word Sarepta over this community. Names are powerful in Scripture, and they're powerful in the kingdom. He's spoken it over this community because that's part of his intention. But is it possible that you've been in a season where God's been pruning, pulling out, pulling out the idol from your life, where there's been a word from God that stopped the rain <laughs> so that you'd stop relying on the God of rain and start relying on the God of the Bible. Is that possible? Does that resonate? Any hands in the air? If you just agree, okay, at least one. I'm not going to be stoned. Amen. And then final thing, God then sends Elijah to a widow in Zarephath. Really big deal. Why? Because widows were the lowest on the social scale. Not only was she a widow, she was a Gentile widow. So a Syrophoenician widow. So in a culture where Gentiles were the worst, the people of God, Israel, God sends the prophets to a widow Gentile. You cannot get more bottom of the bottom than that. Here's the powerful thought around that. If God can't work through his chosen people, he'll choose all the people that the world doesn't expect. And so God goes to a widow in Zarephath and sends the prophet there Now, what's this widow doing? Picking up sticks. What's she trying to do? Make her last meal before she dies. And then the prophet says to her, okay, just make me something to eat as well. And she goes, now it's it's an honor culture, so she's like, okay, I guess. But what she's really thinking is, oh my gosh, we're going to die. So she tells him that. And then anyone with any kind of social intelligence at all goes, oh, no, don't worry about it. It's okay. But not Elijah. He's like, yeah, make me the food. (laughs) It's like, that's the most insensitive thing I've ever heard. Yes? Why? Because faith calls us beyond what's normal. Faith calls us beyond what's possible. Faith calls us beyond what's comfortable. Faith calls us beyond what's polite. Faith calls us beyond what's appropriate. And so there's a, there's a whole community over here maybe going, man, I think I've got just enough for one more meal. And what you would expect is, there, there, it's okay, go enjoy your meal. But that's not the word of the Lord. The Lord, word of the Lord would come into your perceived lack and tell you, go make me some food. Yeah? Put your faith into action. Do something 
with the little that you have, and I will make it multiply. And so these, the, there's this idea, and what we've seen this morning, I wanted to land this experience in this story. Because what we're seeing is, is the people we least expected, all the widows of Zarephath. And that's what's happening in the earth at the moment, by the way. Because you're not alone. The church, particularly in the West, has, has lost the plot. And there is a repentance moving, sweeping across the church. And I want to say, if the church won't repent, then God will go to Zarephath. He'll find, he will raise up a remnant from some, somewhere else. Jesus is not passively sitting by while we play around with our coffee and kids' entertainment spaces. He's like, you better be the church. And if you won't be the church, church, I'll go find the church somewhere else. <laughs> That's what God's doing because he's serious about this thing. He's serious about his glory. And so the invitation to Sarepta is, man, return to who you are. Hey, Zarephath, be Zarephath again. Be Zarephath again. Yeah? And you're going, oh, but we don't have enough. I just got enough to go and make a meal for my kid before I die. Jesus is saying, if you'll just bring me that, I'll do something with it. Because that's what's been spoken over your community. And you might say, but who are we? We're not that church down the road or that church down the road. We're just like, look like, look at us. And Jesus says, yeah, that's why I went to Zarephath. Because I specialize in finding widows who are Gentiles. I, I specialize in taking the least, the people who least expect to be used by God. That's fertile ground for a revival. Yes, if you'll just submit yourself to him, lean in, and use the little you have for the great things he wants to do. So all I would say, Sarepta, return to the name that's been spoken over you as a community. Let's pray. Father, we uh, thank you for this church. We thank you for what you've done here this morning and are doing in this community. We want to pray for wisdom and strategy to help the leadership in this community steward what you're stirring in this place. We want to pray for more, God, more fire, more hunger. I pray you would consistently disrupt any gravitational pull back to the, the ordinary, back to the familiar. I pray that you would be disruptive in this place unto holiness, unto encounter, unto renewal, unto your church, unto your glory, unto the fullness of life that you have come to give, Jesus. We thank you that for some, this has been like taking a deep breath of fresh air, Thank you that you have comforted the disturbed in this place this morning. And for some, this has been like a slap in the face. Thank you that you have disturbed the comfortable this morning. We are so grateful for that, Lord. And we pray for more, and we just trust that this church will continue to go to strength for strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we just pray for YWAM as well. Just pray for the provision touch. We just pray that they may continue spreading the word of God, whatever they do. And uh, at the pastor's retreat, one thing that we have learned, and uh, it really touched me, uh, this week at Rich River, we were, there were all the pastors. And I just wanted to say, just pray for the pastors, because they're going through a difficult time and they don't have anyone to talk to. And one Alexander Fenta, he said something that strikes me. He said, what we think is a revival, it's not right. Revival begins in our own heart as well. And then it's hard to prove the revival from our heart. But he said, what we're going to see a real revival, it will be the pouring of the Spirit where people repent and coming from that gate to say that I've been in contact with Jesus without any speakers, without any microphones, without anything that will get it to hype up. It, that will be called a revival. But now the revival needed to start to begin in our own heart. And my prayer is that Go in the week where we're actually crying out for the revival of our heart. Crying out that the Lord will guide our heart. In Jesus' name, I'm not preaching. Thank you, man. You bless you. And we love you guys. I love you. Come on, come on. Bring it out. Yeah, you want to say something? Come, 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 come. come. You, want, you don't want to. Okay. You, you get good. Come, come. That's God. Come on. Don't be. Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I am Afrikaans, and I'm going to try my very best, but through this whole um, ceremony, it's been pressed on my heart. It's really time for us to wake up. 
if we want to stand out and pray for people's healing and stuff, we cannot continue the way we are continuing by believing all the lies of this world. So if there is going to be a revival at Sarepta, it's time to open your eyes now. We cannot continue in pagan beliefs and everything that this world has brought to us. If you are confused about something, go to your Bible, go re do your research and see it's not from God. If it's from this world, it's not from God. We cannot participate in it. Because if we want to stand out and make a difference for God's kingdom, it's time to stand up now. Like Easter, I'm very sorry, please do not donate eggs. <laughs> the, um, it's not from God, it's pagan. You need to go read where it comes from, from the goddess of heaven. Where, where's the queen goddess of heaven? Go, go, go do your research. I was a little bit late on the Valentine thingy. That's also not of God. We cannot continue in this world's religion. If you want a relationship with God, you need to wake up now. You can't be on the fence. He'll spit you out. Either you're hot or you lukewarm, which doesn't even mean anything. So, um, yeah, I'm shaking here because I'm not used to doing this, and I'm Afrikaans, so, um, but it was pressed hard on me to, to get this message to you guys. If you want to make a difference, stop being fake now and stand up for God. My wife's heart is about truth, and my heart is the same. Um, this past week, we had quite a scare. She had um, um, a burst appendix. Okay, so we went to the hospital, the medical room, and uh, they said, now she's potentially burst appendix. We have to take you for surgery. Now, we don't have that money. Our medical aid wasn't, hasn't kicked in, nothing. So I was in a bit of a pickle. So I needed about 100 grand. And that's a lot of money. Um, so I felt myself in a position of, do I go and ask a friend of mine to borrow money to save my wife? Or do I rely on God? We have to be understand that God is plan A, there is no plan B. There is no plan B. And that's what God laid on my heart this week. As I wrestled with my mind, how am I going to save my wife? It's not about me. It's about him. And I sat there thinking, God, how am I going to get this money? And he said, am I plan A or am I plan B? Are we making God plan B or is he our plan A? If we understand the scriptures of how he is our healer, and what he says he is, do we rest on the, that word or do we rest on our own understanding, which is, uh, in case that's not true, let me have a plan B. Is God our everything or isn't he? And I had to make a tough decision. I said, okay, God, I'm going to stand on your word. And... Um, I said, I'm not going to do a plan B. I'm not going to have a plan B. I'm going to fight. I'm going to say enough is enough. This is what the word says about you being my healer and our healer, and I'm going to stand on it. Just give you a bit of background. Her white blood cells were 380. They meant to be nine. That's sick. Okay. So now I'm shaking, and I'm, and I'm like pressed to go and see my friend, and, and I'm saying, no, okay, God, what do you want me to do? God became my plan A, and we prayed for her, and we stood on the word of God, and she's healed. I needed to say that because what is the word? I just, I mean, I was sitting there before she even came up. I was also um, the whole Easter thing and traditions of man. I want to challenge every single one of you to go into the word of God and see where it says Easter, Christmas, all the stuff of our religious backgrounds, because it's religion, guys. It's not life. It's got nothing to do with the glory of God. Nothing. It's glorifying Easter. Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. 
Go and do yourself a favor and go and research the backgrounds of all of that stuff. Please, guys, it's, if we're going to be living for God, we need to be living by truth and what the Word of God says. If it's not, and I just said to my daughter the other day, I said, rule of thumb, if it's not in the Word, it's of the world. If it's not in the Word, it's of the world. And we have to come out of her, God says. Come out of Babylon. So we either choose the, the way, the truth, and the life, which is Christ, or we choose the world. And unfortunately, it's a very fine line that we walk. It's so easy to step off. And I don't mean this to be heavy, but guys, if we stand on the Word of God and we, st- and we make Him plan A and not plan B and plan C just in case that doesn't, God doesn't come through, then what are we doing? God is plan A, guys. There is no other plan. And, and my wife is, 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 is a testimony of that. I mean, we, that's how bad it was. So be encouraged, guys. If you want truth, seek it, and God will show you. But do not follow the traditions of man. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. God has been speaking. And I love you guys have some tea. <laughs> and catch with one another. If you want a prayer, I'm sure you can find other people to pray for you. And I always like to say, John Wimble said, everybody got to play. We are all know Christ. You can lay hands and pray for people. So have some tea. And then have a lovely, blessed week. And then, yeah, love you. Love you. Love you, Leander. Love you, my man. You're my friend. Give me a hug. Bye. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs>